been a little over a year, but the sexual assault scandal, in my opinion, is never going to be forgotten at Baylor. Not only did it compromise the integrity of the university, but also, too, it led, let's face it, to the transfer of several players, not to mention uh, decommitments from their recruiting classes. And, you know, last year, head coach Jim Grove, he was just a one-year experiment after replacing the fired Art Broyles. First six games, you know, Baylor won them. They were looking good. And then the last six games, they took the ultimate free fall. They lost all those six games. And at the same time, against Oklahoma, um, Seth Russell suffered a, a significant injury. And that led the way to uh, Zach Smith, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Now for Baylor, it is a new regime. And it's going to be a different type of offense under the direction of Matt Rule. And Matt Rule, he, this guy's already proved himself. I mean, he won at Temple. That's right, Temple. You know, they're not a football school, but he made them into one, including this last year where they were double digits in wins, and they won the American Athletic Conference Championship and finished the year in the top 25. Temple hadn't done that in 36 years, finished ranked. So you know that's coaching right there. So Matt Rule now comes to Waco and will try to uh, revive the program. Um, like I mentioned, the offense is going to be different. They're going to be a little slower. It's going to be a uh, pro-style spread type offense. And don't expect them to run hurry-up style. Expect them to try to focus on two things, eating up yardage but eating up minutes off the clock as well. The quarterback situation we mentioned, Zach Smith uh, played against Oklahoma, in fact, started the final four games of the season. He had some highlights, too, um, including the uh, bowl win over Boise State and the Cactus Bowl. I thought he was outstanding and even looked good against Texas Tech, even though I know the Red Raiders won that game. But also, too, was shaky at times against West Virginia, completed less than half of his passes, and also, too, against Kansas State, threw for three interceptions. Ouch. Here we are, August the 29th, doing this report, and we still don't know, with Baylor's first game four days away, who the starting quarterback's going to be. Um, I mean, come on, Coach Rule, you're killing us. Who, who are you going to start, um, Zach Smith or the transfer from Arizona in a new Solomon, who had some pretty nice numbers for the Wildcats? And the thing is, if you start Solomon, you're only going to have him for one year. He's a senior. He's a uh, graduate transfer, so... That's going to be something to really, really monitor Zach Smith or a new Solomon. We still don't know the starting QB, but we know that the running game, it's set with Terrence Williams uh, back for his senior year last year, had over 1,000 yards rushing and a whopping 11 touchdowns. No shock Linwood for um, the Baylor Bears, but third leading rusher for the Bears does return in Jamichael Hasty. Receivers, man, this is a tough thing for Baylor. Of course, we've known them for receivers in the past, but they lost their top two from a year ago. Um, Ishmael Zamora and then their number one threat in uh, KD Cannon. Re both receivers combined for over 2,000 yards receiving and 21 touchdowns. That's production that's almost impossible to replace. But what you have back, you got Chris Platt returning, almost 600 yards receiving, not bad, and four scores. Um, last year as a freshman, Blake Lynch um, had over 400 yards receiving and three touchdowns. And we'll see if a couple of guys who were freshmen last year make more of a contribution this year as sophomores. Um, that is Poo Strickland and Denzel Mims, who had a combined 17 catches. The tight end, you really got to like. This guy has proven himself. Jordan uh, Fuerbacher started nine games last year, played all 13, all Big 12 honors a year ago. Um, he's no question an impactful player for that Baylor offensive line. Now, speaking of the Baylor offensive line, this is the most significant area of all the layers that we'll talk about on either side of the ball. They've got some good starters, okay? I'm not saying they don't have experience, but they really don't have proven depth. As a matter of fact, only eight offensive linemen for Baylor are on scholarship, and that's really going to show its toll you know, as far as wearing tear as the season goes along, especially once they get into Big 12 play. Um, the left guard returns, though, Ishmael Wilson, a veteran. He's a senior. And you also have back uh, Blake uh, Blackmar, a junior, um, who started every game last year except the one. And then you have the right tackle returning in Patrick uh, Lawrence. Now, the guy that played a little bit last year was uh, Mo Porter entering his senior year. We'll have to set up the first half against Liberty. That's because of violating team rules. And Tanner Thrift running off the starting lineup. He's a senior, and he will play the center position. Baylor last year offensively was very, very good. Back sixth in the country when it came to total yardage at 522 per game. Of course, Baylor is curious. You know, their fans have got to be curious as far as if those numbers are going to be compromised a little bit because you're going to a different type of offense. Yeah, probably, but hey, if you can establish ball control, hey, your offense will be on the field more and your defense won't be on the field as much. And I think that is the goal 
for uh, Matt Rule's team. On the defensive side, Baylor will feature the 4-3 look. And while it wasn't the worst defense in all of the Big 12, it certainly wasn't the best. As far as scoring D, they gave up uh, 29 points per game. And this team was soft as a pillow when it came to trying to defend the run. They weren't very good at it at all. So you got two of the four defensive linemen back. Um, K.J. Smith, I think, is capable of having a good year for one because he's active in tackling. 67 stops a year ago. But number two, he gets the quarterback, uh, the leading sack returner, had seven sacks a year ago. And another starter, you have uh, Ira Lewis, 36 stops a year ago, starting defensive tackle. The other DT, last year as a freshman, Tyrone Hunt, had uh, 30 tackles. And by the way, he was the MVP on the defensive side of that Cactus Bowl win over Boise State. And running out the front four for Baylor is Xavier Jones, a junior, 24 tackles, who played the other DE. Linebacker, only one full-time starter back, but leading returning tackler for Baylor, as a matter of fact, um, he was a third leading tackler a year ago in the Big 12. We're talking about uh, Taylor Young, a senior now, 29 uh, career starts. Last year started all 13 games. Strong side linebacker in Lenoy Jones, last year as a freshman, um, had 19 stops. And the third linebacker who will play the middle linebacking spot, that will be Clay Johnston, last year as a freshman, 20 stops. So, you know, two of the three guys you got coming into this year at linebacker, yeah, uh, not a lot of playing time, but, again, they'll be around for seasons to come. And if you thought the Bears were young at the linebacking core, secondary to even younger. Three of the four um, are sophomores, and we're talking about both corners. And, you know, last year Baylor was a secondary. You know, they gave up uh, 238 yards of passing per game. Now, that does sound like a lot, but remember that was second best in the Big 12. Now, Again, three of the four are sophomores, including both the corners, and Grayland Arnold, um, who played in 11 games last year, started in four, and had 17 solo tackles. That's good. Uh, Jamison Houston, um, also a sophomore, um, starting two games, played in 11. And then the safeties, guy who played every game last year and started in 10, the only upperclassman of the foursome, that's Davian Hall, had a whopping 16 tackles against K-State a year ago, and rounding out the lineup for Baylor, sophomore in Henry Black, who did play, by the way, last year in all 13 contests. Look at the Baylor schedule. Well, the first three games ought to be gravy. That's nothing new because Baylor never plays anybody that good in non-conference. So why change tradition? <laughs> September 2nd is the opener against Liberty. Second game, not much time for Texas San Antonio. You wrap up at Duke. Not expected to have a good year out of the ACC. But then the first five games of Big 12 play in Baylor could very well lose all of them. I'm not saying they will, but they could. Oklahoma, defending Big 12 champion, you get them at home. I can see that being a game for maybe two and a half, maybe even three quarters, but the Sooners will wear them down at the end. Next two games are both away from Waco and their Tuppies. At Kansas State, then the bye week, and then you play at Oklahoma State. You get West Virginia at home, but that will be tough. And Texas, that game could go either way. You might remember last year it was the Longhorns who handed Baylor their first loss and Baylor did not win a regular season game after that. Then November, in comparison to October, looks a lot easier. you got to go to Kansas. Of course, you always play Texas Tech at Jerry's World. Iowa State ought to be a win. And then you wrap up the regular season the day after Thanksgiving in Fort Worth against the Horned Frogs. Vegas says that Baylor will be at 7.5 wins. I'm not that optimistic at all. I do think Baylor will get to bowl eligibility, but by the skin of their teeth. Six wins is where I have Baylor. I think the round game, again, is going to be effective. And I think they'll be okay no matter who they go with that quarterback. But receiving-wise, they're not going to be as good as they were last year. And the thing that's going to hurt Baylor the most is lack of offensive line depth. It won't hurt them in the beginning, but it will hurt them once they get into the rugged month of October. Baylor will be in the postseason, but contending for Big 12 championships, well, that's too soon. That's my look at Baylor. See you next time.